Hi there, and welcome back again in this course ABE 180. Today we'll be discussing our new topic, and that is the pneumatic conveyor. And if you recall in the previous topics, the belt conveyors, uh, screw conveyors, and bucket elevators, they transport the materials by the movement of mechanical parts. Like for example, the buckets, the buckets, uh, the bucket elevators. So there's a um, a running belt wherein the buckets are attached, and your material is loaded in the bucket. So in that way, it can lift the material or transport the material from one place to another. Another one is the screw conveyor. So basically, the screw conveyor just transport the materials by the rotation of the screw. Okay, so once this screw rotates, you have a transport of materials. And the recent one that we discussed is the belt conveyor. So basically, it's just a belt, a horizontal belt or an inclined belt. And then because of the movement of the belt, then the material can be transported. Now, this pneumatic conveyor is entirely different from the other three that we already discussed. When you say pneumatic conveyor, basically it means the word conveyor means um, to transport, or you can just say transport of materials. Whereas pneumatic would mean air, or it can be can be any other gases. Okay, so that depends upon the type of material being being conveyed. So the basic principle is that you have an air moving device here, let's say a blower or a fan or compressor. Okay, and you have this conduit right here. So let's say this is our our inlet point let's say point one and then we want to transport it uh, let's include a vertical distance and let's say we wanna we want to transport it um, up to here and we'll call this point two so meaning that if we load the material here there must be a loader of course so let's just write uh, let's just draw a feeder or something like this and then of course there must be some outlet right here okay so the material is loaded right here and then it mixes with the air so we have an air we'll use other colors for the air okay so this is our air and then this is the product and here we have a mixture of air and the particles or the solid products that we have and right here of course is there a mixture uh, I mean since they're in mixture then it has to be separated the air has to be separated from the from the uh, from the solids okay so if you can see that the transport of materials are being done because of the force of the air Okay, so now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of pneumatic conveyor systems. For the advantages, we can see that the pneumatic conveyor has fewer moving parts. Of course, um, it has a few, uh, few moving parts, only the blower. Actually, it's just some components of the, of the blower. But this one, they're not moving, uh, except for this airlock or other locking devices here. But compare that to the bucket elevators or screw conveyors and belt conveyors that they, they include a lot of moving parts. So meaning that if it has a few moving parts, then we can say that it has um, 
it has less cost on maintenance or repair or trouble troubleshooting issues so that's it has few moving parts and number two the second advantages would be it can have flexible routing okay so flexible routing so you can have also flexible conduits or you can uh, whatever routing it may be impossible for the other three but for pneumatic conveyors that that, that would be possible okay so for example in this belt belt conveyor if you want to have um, something like this a transport of material something like this then of course there's going to be some mechanical um, mechanical components or mechanical connections for this type of routing but for this one it's just pipes so you can have uh, 90 degree uh, 90 degree bands or 45 degrees or whatever okay so basically we can say that it has uh, a more flexible routing uh, capacity compared to the other three okay and number three it can have uh, it can accommodate multiple points or multiple multiple inputs or outputs when you say multiple inputs we can have um, we can have uh, let's say multiple inlets right here so that depends upon the design so it is possible to have multiple inlets and of course one outlet or it is also possible to have a a multiple outlet so you have uh, let's say a series of outlets right here and you have one inlet okay so that's the flexibility of pneumatic conveyors and another one is that the material conveyed has little or no exposure little or no exposure to environment the environment of course compare that to this packet elevator screw conveyors we're in um, they are actually exposed to the uh, to the environment whereas this one they're just um, totally enclosed okay so now let's talk about the disadvantages so for the disadvantages it has uh, the most common um, thinking about this pneumatic conveyor is that it has um, high power requirement okay, power requirements um, probably that refers to specific power requirements per uh, let's say per unit kg of the materials okay so because you have to um, to provide a velocity or let's say provide an air velocity that would suspend the the materials in this conduit however um, I think that refers to the uh, to one type of pneumatic conveyor uh, pneumatic conveying systems uh, referred to as the loot phase systems but because of the um, newer method of conveying the materials pneumatically then there's another phase called dense phase and later we will discuss this in detail dense phase conveying the other one is the loot phase so in the the loot phase you have to suspend the materials and um, suspending the materials would mean uh, you have to to put a lot of power in the air 
but for this dense phase conveying then there's no need to suspend the um, particles or the solids so in that way you can reduce the power requirement now another one is that we have potential uh, material damage um, of course friable materials as, I've, uh, as we already discussed in the previous lectures those are materials that are or that can break down easily due to let's say impacts or mechanical mechanical forces so this one because the materials are being transported uh, in the air then of course there's going to be um, collisions or attritions between between the solids and between the solids and the pipe poles and of course in that way that can that can actually damage the materials i mean the the a product itself okay so uh again that i mean maybe that that refers to this type of pneumatic systems the the loot phase but for dense phase um you can actually reduce this material material damage due to attrition forces okay the third one would be high wear high wear on components so this one refers to the components of the of the system itself so we have this pipe piping systems and then we have this uh, fittings these elbows and because there are there are frictions between the solids and then the pipe walls and these elbows for example then there's going to be um, high frictions uh, on the surface and therefore um, you can have high wear on these components okay so um, typical systems for pneumatic uh, conveyor can have diameters uh, pipe diameters that varies between 10 mm to 800 mm and that's according to one of our references and for large amount of materials such as grains uh, I mean of course if you have or if you want to transport large amount of materials then you would you would need a larger diameter of pipe okay and then for the for the mass flow rate so we can have few kgs per hour to tons per hour and for the lines we can have 10 meters to 1000 meters so that depends again upon the systems and the airspeed typically 10 to 30 meters per seconds okay so those um, are the typical ranges provided by our reference okay so now before we delve into the detail of the computations or um, even the parts and assemblies we'll discuss first the basic principles regarding the flow regime of of solid and gas mix mixtures so consider consider a pipe a horizontal pipe and we are loading this one with a solid particles let's say a grain or beans or we can just say coffee beans okay so because we're loading it here then let's say we have this very high velocity uh, a velocity that's high enough that it can suspend the the material okay so we have this type of flows Okay, and 
we refer to this type of flow as homogeneous flow. Um, homogeneous flow regime. And now let's consider reducing this velocity. So instead of having a faster velocity, we will reduce this. And let's say that velocity reaches the settling velocity of the uh, solid particles. Okay, so when the velocity is reduced, then you would notice that there would be some, some solid particles that that would settle at the bottom of the pipe. And of course, some would still be suspended. Okay, so this settling of salt particles, we call this saltation flow. And what would happen if we still re uh, reduce this velocity? then what would happen is that the subtle particles would start to form something like this, dunes. And, right, we call these dunes. Or we can say, we can refer to that as dune flow. And of course, there might be some uh, suspended particles but then much of the particles would be settled down already and forming tunes or groups of something like clusters, clusters of solids. Okay, and what would happen if we still further reduce the velocity? Then of course, these tunes would start to, to transform into slugs. Okay, so this one is just a small clusters and then it transforms to a bigger clusters called slugs. We call this slug flow. And lastly, if we reduce, farther reduce the velocity, then what we'll see would be the entire cross section of this pipe or this conduit would be entirely filled with this um, with these solid particles. Now, the velocity we're in, the, the solid particles starts to settle down. The velocity is referred to as saltation velocity. So now if we graph this velocity and the solid concentrations, you would see a graph something like this. Then this one would be the superficial gas velocity. And then this one would be the solid, uh, let's say, co solid concentrations or flow rate. And then this one would be the pressure lines, specific pressure lines. And we have this maximum point right here. And that maximum point that corresponds to the velocity at which the particles just starts to suspend and that's what we call the saltation velocity or u sub salt okay so that's our saltation velocity at this pressure line and of course if you are referring to this to this pressure line then you would have this uh, saltation velocity at this point okay so let's say we have this d um, delineation so the region beyond this saltation velocity is what we call the dilute phase. And the region below the saltation velocity is what we call the dense phase. Okay, actually there's some, um, depending upon the materials, I guess, 
there would be some unstable region in between right here but for now for simplicity we'll just say uh, this is dance phase and then this one is the loot phase okay, so for the the loot phase we have um, a characteristics that uh, high velocity a low volume I guess we should not write uh, low volume because that depends upon uh, the point but we can just say I guess we, uh, we can simply say that uh, that the dilute phase is is characterized by high velocity. Okay, so this is our saltation velocity. So, so above that, meaning the materials are moving faster and they are suspended. So that's in the high velocity region. And below this, the the materials are um, are settled down, and so we can write that the velocity is low okay so if you recall that I mentioned about the friable materials so meaning that not every material is um, recommended for dilute phase especially if you are um, or uh, let's say the end goal of the pneumatic conveying is that to preserve the um, the the material size so for example the um, peanuts okay so if you intend that the peanuts would not be uh, for peanut butter i mean if you if the end goal is that you want it to be still in whole peanuts then of course the appropriate uh, phase would be the dense phase, but if you intended to further grind it or make it a peanut butter or something, then it wouldn't matter if um, if you would want to go for for this dilute phase. Now we can also see the graph between the superficial gas velocity and the pressure pressure drop. And we'll see a graph something like this. So it's just something like the inverted graph before. And this would be our saltation velocity. And this will be our solid loading. So this will be our solid loading. And the region beyond this saltation velocity is referred to as the dilute phase. That this one would be the dense phase. Okay, so you would see that for dilute phase systems, we have low low pressure, right? So we can write low pressure and high velocity. Low pressure but high velocity. And this one for the dense phase, we have a higher pressure, higher pressure drops, of course, because the the there's a lot of um, solids along along the pipeline. So the so the pressure would be higher, uh, high pressure, but low velocities. Okay, so if we refer back to this uh, flow regime, this saltation flow would be somewhere here. Okay, and then this one for the dilute phase, that's going to be a homogeneous flow. And then this one, there's going to be some, um, some delineations, but basically you, you would see Uh, let's say June flows and then this one would be slag flows and then plug flows if it's completely filled until 
there's no movement at all so there must be a limit somewhere here we in no flow boundary so meaning that the air cannot pass through the material also right here that's gonna be no flow boundary okay so now let's talk about the uh, movement or pneumatic conveying in a vertical pipe now for a vertical pipe if the velocity of the air is let's say there's um, enough enough velocity that the flow would be um, homogeneous something like homogeneous except that it's in vertical direction and if uh, you can see that if you try to reduce the velocity then of course some of the pressure I mean so some of the uh, the solids would, would start to to form clusters along the side of the walls right here and then it will form like something like dunes and then there's gonna be some bubbles if you farther reduce then you would have a bubble flows until it will entirely block the 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 pipe okay so except that the velocity right here if we check the uh, the pressure the delta p the pressure drop over the uh, superficial velocity gas velocity and the pressure drop we can see something like this and this velocity would, um, would be the choking velocity you choking so that's uh, choking velocity okay um, by the way you can also explain this in terms of the amount of um, amount of solids that's that entered into this pipeline earlier we we described this um, as a constant um, let's say constant constant solid loading I mean constant input and we just vary we just decrease this velocity this gas velocity but you can also explain all this in terms of uh, let's say fixed velocity and then um, I mean, not not a fixed velocity, but but rather uh, explain all this in terms of the amount of solids that's uh, that entered into this pipeline. For example, like this, you have few amounts of solids, then that's going to be homogeneous flows. And you, in, if you increase uh, more solids, solid particles, then of course the ratio of the solid and the gas, um, there's going to be. Um, uh, a reduction probably a reduction in the velocity and you would observe that some of the solids would start to settle down and if you farther increase the solids the solid the amount of solid particles then of course you, you would start to have um, dunes I mean the the solid particles starts to form dunes and then it will eventually turn into slugs and finally it will um, have a plug flow conditions and until that there's no more I mean there's there's uh, there's gonna be no more flow movement anymore okay so um, I guess we'll continue our discussion in the next video